Good morning and welcome to our service. Looking a little different in these times we find ourselves in. We're not able to meet together as a church community, but I hope that uh, this short service that I'm going to put together uh, will be able to help us uh, worship even though we're not in the church building. So before we start, I hope you are all keeping well. Um, I hope that um, you're able to contact somebody if you need a chat. The clergy are all available. Uh, for those who are in Kingsport Parish churches, you should have all been buddied up with somebody and hopefully uh, you and your buddies should now be in contact with each other. There's going to be a few things that might be helpful uh, throughout our service this morning. Um, you will need your worship book if you want to follow along at home. If you don't have one, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're following this from Facebook, the link on Facebook, you will find on the parish Facebook page um, a copy of this booklet. Um, you don't need it. There will be no responses. Um, it's just sometimes helpful if you're the type of person that likes to follow um, along with the words. You'll also need um, a tea light. Um, if you've used yours up already that we sent out in the worship packs, great. Um, if you've got one, that's brilliant. If not, again, don't worry. Um, grab a paper, some paper and a pen um, and we will use, uh, we will draw our own uh, light in a short while. You may also want um, to get yourself a cup when we come to celebrating the Eucharist later. Um, so it feels like we're taking part and using all of our senses. Um, it might be helpful for you to hold a cup when I'm holding um, the chalice. If that's so, um, go and grab one, stop the video. One of the great things about YouTube videos um, is you can stop and start and go and grab stuff as um, and when and necessary. You might also want your Bible. Um, again, if you're following along in the readings, um, I will read all the readings this morning. If you don't have your Bible handy, then that's that's fine. Um, again, if you haven't got it handy, stop the video, go and grab one, um, find one on your phone or however you want to access Bible material. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, just sit back and listen to the words. If you're following along in the book, um, I will use the words as set out in the worship pack um, and after the prayers of intercession, I will go into the words that we would use uh, at the Eucharistic prayer. There will be no responses because we haven't written them down, um, but I will word them um, in a way that allows us to let the words of the prayer seep, seep into our hearts. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. This is a time when we can be still in the silence. If you've still got your tea light, it's an opportunity to light that candle now as a reminder that Jesus is the light in the world. If you don't have a tea light, grab a piece of paper and a pen. And draw your own candle or your own light. Um, I have a Sharpie here just so we can see it on the camera. There's my light, which I will put next to the light I have already lit. We're going to play a worship song now, um, one that you may or may not be used to. Uh, it's a relaxing one. And during the time of worship, uh, allow the words to sink in your heart. If you know the songs, please feel free to sing along at home. Um, or use it as a time to sit and think of those in our church community. Think of those people who you normally sit next to on a Sunday morning. Or maybe think of people 
those faces of those who you don't normally sit next to, those faces on the opposite side of church, or those faces that you pass normally on your way to church.
as God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle us in the fire of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to a time of confession, a time when we can leave those things that we have thought, said, done or not done this past week. Those times where we have not been quite the disciples that Jesus might like us to be. In a moment of quiet, let's leave those things at the foot of the cross. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn back to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all of our days. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is taken from Ezekiel 37, beginning at verse 1. The Valley of the Dry Bones The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was pros prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those are, who are in the realm of flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. The death of Lazarus. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother, Lazarus, now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days, and then he went to his disciples and said, Let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them more plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us go along also, that we might die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Mary, Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could he not, could not he, who opened the eyes of the blind man, have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take the stone away, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. I wonder if you are finding that what seemed so normal a few weeks ago appears a little different right now. I know that I think about food differently, particularly with not being able to get everything we may want in the shops. I probably make a lot more contact with people, family and friends than I normally would to check that they're okay. Bible readings also seem to have a different light cast on them when reading them at this time. Certain verses or phrases seem to stand out more. I particularly found that the phrases about death have stood out quite strongly, which may be not surprising given that when we turn on the news or look at social media, we're surrounded by coronavirus death. It is worrying times, either for ourselves, someone we know and the people that we love. It's a confusing time. The information from the government last week seemed to change daily. Lockdown, I guess in some ways, has provided a sense of stability. Our instructions are straightforward. Stay at home, only go out for essentials, food or essential travel one daily exercise outing, keep our social distance. In some ways we have been put into an enforced wilderness, unable to meet together to worship like we normally would do. 
But just as Jesus left the wilderness, we too will leave the wilderness. A verse that particularly struck me from John's Gospel reading today was this. Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. At this time when many are struggling, whether that's because of imposed isolation for three months, difficulties with shopping, anxieties because of changing times and uncertainties, it is good in the midst of difficulties to recognise those moments of light, moments of everyday grace as I like to call them, those tiny, tiny moments of God's hope in the wilderness. As we journey towards Easter Day, we are being guided out of the wilderness and into the light and hope of Jesus. This year, it may not feel that when we get to Easter Day that we have left the wilderness, particularly if we are still in lockdown. But what we can do is hold on to the light and look out for these brief moments of light and grace each day. For some, going out for a walk isn't an option at the moment. But as a community, I challenge us during this wilderness time, when we are able, unable to meet face to face, to try and be bearers of God's light, to share with each other in some way, some moments of grace. Maybe that new flower that you saw sprouted in your garden that you didn't know was there before. Maybe that warmth of the sun, an awareness of it that you hadn't noticed previously. A telephone call, a letter that you've received, sharing good news. There are still good news stories happening, even in the midst of what feels like being bombarded with lots of difficult and dark news share these good times with each other, post them on Facebook, share them on the telephone with your buddy group, be the light to each other. Jesus said, those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. So in these wilderness times, let us be lights to each other and in turn be light to the world. Amen. Let us join in the words of the Creed together. If you have the booklet in front of you, join with me in the words. If not, allow the words as you listen to them dwell into your own heart. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and is, seat he and is ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. For time of prayers of intercession, during which I'll play some quiet music which has been kindly put together by Andrew Moody, our organist. And as we play, you hear the music. Pray for today, for the world, for those that lead us, our parish and our church community, for those who are sick and for ourselves. to our Eucharistic prayer. You don't have the words to follow in your books, but do um, let the words as I say them uh, dwell in your heart and listen to them. If you have your cup uh, handy to hand, um, when I get to the part um, where I lift and hold the cup, maybe hold your cup in your hand um, as a reminder of what Jesus was doing with his disciples at the Last Supper. The Lord is here with each and every one of us in our own homes and we lift up our hearts to the Lord. We give the Lord thanks and praise. It is indeed just and right, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For at the same time as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed 
took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one kingdom all who share in this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And though we are many and apart, we are still one body because we can all share in this one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. The body of Christ broken for each and every one of us. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for each and every one of us. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's finish with our concluding prayers. Christ be with me, Christ be within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, 
Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in our hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Fill us, Lord, with the spirit of your love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And it wouldn't be a Sunday service if we didn't have notices. Uh, tea and coffee is available after the service from your own kitchen. Um, you'll have to make it yourself. There's also a, a notice sheet. Um, it has gone out by email. Um, if you do need a paper copy um, of it or you know somebody that needs a paper copy of it, please do let uh the office now and we will get one posted out to them. Take care of yourselves, keep in contact. Um, if you have any suggestions of what you'd like us to video for services, please do let us know either by email, comment on the Facebook page um, and we will try to do it. Bear with us as we work this uh, new way of being church out. Um, we do very excitedly have um, an, a good Easter day service planned um, and hopefully you will we'll have other people contributing. You won't just have my voice and my face. Um, but until then, stay safe um, and let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.